Hello. Now in today's video, we're going to be talking about central heating. Yeah, I know it sounds a bit boring, but it's not. This is actually going to be quite interesting. Well, I hope it is anyway. Now we're going to be looking specifically at smart central heating, and that is going to be done by these guys. Now this is Tado or Tardo. I've actually emailed to get the correct pronunciation because I don't want to say it wrong through the whole video, but I might end up doing that anyway. But yeah, so this is Tardo or Tado, and it is a smart thermostat. Now, smart thermostats have been a thing for quite a while now. You've got the Google Nest, you've got Hive, and there's loads of other different brands. But Tardo are actually one that I've been sort of mulling over for a while and actually moving to the house has given me the sort of kick up the bum to switch. See, originally I was using Google Nest and it was fine. It was okay. I don't know, I just didn't really like their ecosystem. It all felt very expensive. And also something that Tardo is, has that is much better than the Nest is you can actually get thermostatic valves for your radiator. So if you don't know what a thermostatic valve is, basically it's a valve that's on your radiator or most radiators and you can control the temperature with the thermostat on that. And that is pretty good, um, but it could be a little bit smarter. And Tardo have actually got th smart thermostatic radiator valves which have a temperature display on them as well. But more on that in a little bit. So basically, let me take you through the current setup that we've got here at the moment. So downstairs, we've got an ideal combi boiler and there is a thermo thermostat on the wall in our hallway. And then if we come upstairs, we've got another thermo thermostat on the wall in the bedroom. And then if we sneak into our airing cupboard, there are two heating zones controlled by some Honeywell valves. So basically, the upstairs and downstairs work independently of each other. So you can turn the heating off downstairs and have it on upstairs and vice versa. And that's controlled by those two valves. And the whole thing is wired in at the moment. There's no wireless functionality or anything like that. So the nice people at Tardo have provided me with some shiny, shiny, shiny. So in here, we've got the wired smart thermostat starter kit which has got an internet bridge in and the wired thermostat and then we've got the additional wired thermostat which will go upstairs and they communicate wirelessly with the internet bridge and they communicate with the zone valves through the wired connection that's already there and also i've got some of these and these are the thermostatic radiator valves that will go on the radiators now i've only got two of them at the moment and i think we've got seven thermostatic radiator valves in the house already. So I will eventually replace all of them with the Tardo ones, but just for now, to keep things simple, we're just going to replace two of them. So yeah, that's what's gonna be in this video. Basically, we're gonna take this all out of the box and get it installed. So what I'll do is I'll make sure there are chapter points included in the video description so you can skip to the bit that is interesting to you or you know, skip past anything, really. But whatever you do, please do give this video a big thumbs up because I think it will be helpful because if you haven't heard of Tardo, I think by the end of this video, you'll be like, ooh, I might want that. And also, if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Subscribing to the channel is absolutely free. Just hit that subscribe button. And if you want to get notifications of when my new videos go live, just whack the bell and you will get notifications. Or if you're feeling a little bit flush, you can actually join the channel. Now joining the channel isn't free, but you can join the channel at various levels and it starts at 99p and it goes up to something ridiculous, which surprisingly no one has signed up for yet. And I wanna give a shout out to the people that have actually joined the channel and stump up money every month to help me make content. So a massive shout out has to go to David because he has subscribed at one of the highest tiers He's mad. I don't think he's actually mad, but I think he's mad for, you know, subscribing that high. So thank you very much, David. And Becky as well. She is up there on one of the higher tiers. Thank you, Becky. Becky has supported me for ages and ages and ages. Also, Bella is there. Bella is a fantastic human and a great driving instructor as well. And then we've got Richard R. Blaster. He is an absolute legend of a human being. We've got Ellis the DJ. I've not heard his DJing skills. I wanna hear his DJing skills. We've got Matt as well. And we've also got someone with no name. Very mysterious. <laughs> but yeah, those cool kids have all joined the channel 
and their monthly fees help me buy stuff to show you on the channel. So if you want to help this channel grow, then please do consider joining the channel. Anyway, enough of that. Let's have a quick look at what's inside these boxes here, and then we can crack on with getting them installed. Okay, so this is like our starter kit. So this contains pretty much everything we need to get cracking. Ba-ba! There we go, so this is our wired smart thermostat. Uh, we just got some sticky pads and some screws. Ah, look, we've got stickers to label the wires as specified in the instructions. We'll uh, have a little look more at that later. And then what's under here? Okay, so we've got an installation guide. Now, a lot of the installation is done via the app or the Tardo website. I'm going to be doing it through the website, um, largely because it's easier to share my screen with you and you can see what I'm up to. So yeah, we'll go on the website and do that. Now I do have a Tardo account set up already, so you know that's one step I won't bore you with, but also all the devices come with little stickers and you can keep all the stickers and their QR codes stuck in here. So if you need to reset anything or go back and check, so you don't have to crawl around the radiators looking for stuff, you can just keep all the details here, which I think is a very nice idea. So uh, here we've got a manual for professional installers. Well, that's certainly not me, but we'll have a little sneaky look. I know there are a lot of sparkies that watch this channel. God bless you all. So this is the English instructions. So yeah, one of the first steps of the installation is installing the internet bridge, which we'll get to in a second, and pairing the thermostat. We've got some wiring diagrams there. Now, I'm pretty certain I understand how it's all wired up. I've, I've had a little look at the existing setup and everything like that, so I think I should be okay, but it is handy to have this kind of information here. Right, what's left in the box? Okay, so this is like our internet bridge. It's actually tiny. This is like the smallest device I've seen. It's like, you know, proper wickle. So it's got some indication LEDs there and a pairing button. And then on the bottom, we've got an RJ45 network connection and a micro USB power socket. And then there's a factory reset button on the back. We've got an RJ45 cable for connecting it to your router or a network switch. Um, it's not a particularly long cable. Um, I don't think that'll be too much of a problem for me, but yeah, you might need a longer network cable. And there's also quite a short uh, USB power cable. You can probably plug this in to the USB socket on the back of your router and that will provide it with power. That is probably something that I will do I've got several devices with USB power in the comms cupboard, so uh, yeah, I'll probably plug it into one of those. But if you don't want to plug it in, I think, yep, yeah, look at this. There is an AC adapter for it with a UK plug top. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to use it actually. Let's see what power specification it needs. Okay, so it's just five volts at one amp. So most USB sockets will whack out five volts at one amp. So yeah, you should be okay and not need that. And then underneath, we've just got some uh, technical documentation, nothing that interesting. So this is the add-on. This is the second wired thermostat that will go upstairs. So basically you need a starter kit first, which is what I've got there. And then you can get add-ons. You can get additional thermostats. You can get wired thermostats. You can get a wireless thermostat. You can get all the different thermostatic radiator valves. Um, I think in total, the Tardo internet bridge can support up to 25 devices. So that should cover most homes, unless you live in a mansion, which I don't know if any of my viewers do live in a mansion. Shouldn't judge, but I don't think any of you do. If you do live in a mansion, then please do uh, drop, drop in the comments. Okay, so that's pretty much the same as what's in the other box. Ah, but this is actually open, so we can have a little butcher's. So this is the end that fixes to the wall. And then this basically sits on top of it. So it's powered by AAA batteries and that is basically what lights up the display. So you will have to pop it off and replace the batteries every so often. And it also has a little wiring diagram on the back of it as well. You know, just if you know what you're doing. 
Tardo seem to be a company that are very keen on getting you to install this yourself. They make it as easy as possible for a homeowner to install this for themselves. I would say it's pretty safe, but as ever, when you're dealing with live electrics, you've got to make sure the power is turned off to the circuits. Um, so, you know, I will be checking mine once I've taken the power off. But yeah, if you're unsure and playing with mains electricity is dangerous. So, you know, if you're very unsure, then a very friendly electrician will install this for you. But if you've got a little bit of competence, then you should be able to install this yourself, especially following the guide on the Tardo website. But we will show you that in a little bit. So yeah, more stickers to put on the wires, more fixings. There's not much else in this box. Okay, so this is actually another starter kit. So there will be an internet bridge in here, but I'm mostly here for the wireless thermostatic radiator valves. So uh, let's have a look in the box at those. Now, basically, if you've got uh, thermostatic valves on your radiator already, this is pretty much a straight swap. Some of my radiators don't have thermostatic valves. I'll uh, show you a bit of footage of what one of those looks like. You would need to get a plumber in to put a thermostatic valve onto your radiator before you could switch it with one of these Tardo ones. But if you've already got thermostatic radiator valves, then you'll be fine. You can just do a straight swap. This designed for the homeowner to be able to do it, and it's nice and simple. So uh, yeah, that is the valve itself. I think they come in horizontal mounting, vertical mounting, and like a sort of either. So um, these ones are for horizontal mounting, which is handy because I've got some radiators with horizontal mountings on, so that's cool. You basically unscrew your existing valve and screw it on. And yeah, it just looks like a radiator valve, but this actually has a display in it. So when you turn the top of it, you can set the temperature, which is, is really cool. And then you can also set the temperature of that room in the app. So even if you've got a pretty dumb heating system, you could make it super smart and have room-based control just by using these everywhere. And then in the box here, it comes with different adapters. So you can basically fix it to all different types of radiator. So uh, I might need one of these, I might not. Okay, well that is the theory of it all. I guess we've got to go to the practical side now. So uh, got to move my cameras downstairs to the hallway and we'll go from there. It's a bit scary, but I'm excited. Well, you join me in the kitchen. I've sort of set up base camp here, largely because when I turn the power off, there's not gonna be much light and there's a lot of natural light in the kitchen. So that's probably better for filming in. Now, what I'm gonna do first of all is install the internet bridge. So basically, we've got the internet bridge here. We've got an RJ45 connection that plugs into my router or probably my network switch. And then we've got a micro USB connector which gets power into it. So what I'm gonna do, first of all, is I'm gonna take the little sticker off it and put it in my little uh, Tardo sticker book. So uh, let's go into the cupboard and plug it in. Okay, so we're in my comms cupboard. I've started tidying up a bit. It's looking better. We won't look any lower because uh, it looks dreadful. But yeah, I've started tidying it up. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug the internet bridge's network connection into my network switch. And then I'm gonna plug the power into uh, my Raspberry Pi. So that has USB power. And then there we go, it's lit up. Now I'm not gonna leave it dangling precariously like this forever. Um, I need to tidy up this whole cupboard, but we've got our bridge installed and what's it doing at the moment? So it has power connected to the router and now it is collected to Tardo, so that is good. So let's go back to the computer and set it up. Okay, so we're here in the kitchen again and um, I've got the Tardo website up. I've already created my account and everything like that. And now we need to start adding things to it. So first off, we're going to add the internet bridge. So um, let's click on add device. Okay, so my webcam is being a bit of a pain. So I'll just enter the details manually. There we go, so it's found my device and it's asking me to register, so I will register device. Connect to the internet. Yep, we've done that. We are good to go. 
So we've got an internet bridge set up. That was really simple and straightforward. Awesome, well, we can't argue with that. So the next job is to add our thermostat, which is this. So again, it's a case of either scanning the QR code or typing in the serial number and authorization code to add the device to my home. So we'll click on add device and we'll enter those details. Okay, so it's found it, uh, it's ready to register device. Oh, okay, so we've got to uh, open the back plate. So it's just a case of putting your fingers in the hole and pulling, and there we go. And it's telling us to take out the battery tab, which we, we will do. Now, because this thermostat came with the starter kit, it should already be paired in the factory with the internet bridge. We'll see. Okay, I pulled out the tab. And look, there we go, look at that. Awesome, right, so uh, let's press continue. Press the button for three seconds to start pairing. One, two, three. Look, there you go, it's doing the little pairing symbol. Can take up to two minutes, okay. Oh, hang on. I think it's paired, there we go. It is paired, your device is connected, awesome. Right, okay. So now it's time to find out our installation instructions. Which rim thermostat do you want to replace with the Tardo Smart Thermostat? To get instructions, simply search for the manufacturer or model name of the rim thermostat you want to replace. Now this is important. You should ideally note down before you start like the makes and models of all the gear that you're replacing and like your boiler details and everything like that just so you've got them to hand for this bit. So uh, we're going to select room thermostat model. Mine might come up under ESI or Therma. Let's try ESI first of all. IP5. Ah yes, that is it. ESRTP5. Yes, that's it. Confirming. Cool. And look, view the instructions for the selected device so it knows what I've got and it's got the instructions ready. That's so handy. And look, there we go. We've got to prepare our tools for installation. Need a phase tester to ensure that the power supply is correctly switched off. I will use, I've got a multimeter so I can do that. A Phillips or flathead screwdriver got that. A power drill depending on your mounting preference. I won't need a drill. Okay, so now we've got to turn off the power. So uh, let's go and do that. So the power to the heating circuit should all be off. I think I've turned off the right socket. So um, we will double check though, because we obviously don't want to die. Let's take off my old thermostats. And now we've got to undo these covers. And then hopefully behind this, we'll have some nice live wires or not live wires to check. So we're going to assume that even though I've been sort of vigilant, this could still be live. Okay, so this is telling me that one and two is line and neutral. So um, let's put my probes in from my multimeter and see if there is any voltage. No, no voltage. There we go, big fat zero. So no voltage there. So we are safe to continue. Now it's back to the laptop and uh, getting our instructions. <laughs> now something I hadn't considered is thankfully the feed that's feeding the boiler isn't feeding the feed for our router. So I still have an internet connection, which is quite handy. Although the power for the laptop is off, so uh, hopefully the battery will last. So we have switched the power to the heating off. We can say that with a degree of uh, happiness. Okay, so it's telling me to unclip the thermostat. Well, we've done that. Uh, make sure the power is off. We've done that. Yeah, so it's basically saying if the tester still lights up, then stop. <laughs> right, okay. Safe to proceed. The phase tester should no longer light up. Well, we used a multimeter, but you know, potato, potato. Okay, so documenting the existing wiring setup, that's a good idea. So uh, I'm gonna take a picture of the existing setup um, because makes sense, doesn't it? 
there we go. So I've taken a nice shiny picture of the existing wiring. So if anything goes wrong, we can return it to its original state and we can send it to Tardo support should we need to. Perfect. Okay, so <laughs> we need the stickers. Now it's gonna give us wiring instructions for the system as it is. We have got stickers. Now it's saying to write P1 and P2 and P3 on the stickers, but I already have those stickers, so that's fine. So continue. Okay, so now I've got to write on the white space of the stickers. So five, four, we might not need number four, one, and we might not need number two. Okay, marked it as they told me to. We shall continue. Okay, so we've got to attach the stickers to the wires on the thermostat as it is at the moment. So we'll do that. And it says, if handwritten stickers do not match the available terminals or if extra cables are present, do not proceed with the installation. Please send pictures of the wiring to installation at tardo.com. So we will do that. So let's go and stick our stickers on. Oh, it's like having a Panini album again. Okay, so as it stands, we've got a brown wire going into one. We've got a gray wire going into two and then we've got a black wire going into number five. So we need to marry those connections up with our stickers. So number one is that one. Our common. Um, number two is P1. Don't think it needs the neutral, so that's why it's going into P1, because P stands for parking, and um, that is considered a parking terminal. Perfect, and then five is our normally open, so that ties up with our sticker. So I will put that in there. And the only sticker we have left is number four, but we don't need that anyway. So there we go, there is our stickered and labeled up stuff. And that should hopefully tie up with what's on the Tardo installation instruction. So uh, let's go back to that. Okay, so we have attached the stickers to the wires. Job done. Yeah, if there are multiple wires together, stick them together, but we didn't need to worry about that. Cool, right, we can continue. Release the wires! Okay, we'll go and do that in a second. Right, so now we've got to take this cover off and uh, connect the wires into here. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, I'm so excited, honestly, this is so cool. Right, okay, let's go and do that. Okay, so we're gonna disconnect the existing wiring. Now this isn't sort of a step that they give you to do, but I think I'm going to do it anyway. I'm just gonna tuck the uh, terminals into a, a Wago, just so they're all kind of out of the way and they don't touch each other and everything like that because everything is off, but I just, you know, you just wanna make sure you're doing everything as safely as possible. So I think just having those tucked away nicely in there just means you know, everything is hunky-dory. There you go, and we don't have a load of wires dangling around with their connections just sort of idly flapping in the wind. As I say, it seems unnecessary, but I'm just doing it anyway. Okay, so there is our Tardo backplate where it's roughly going to be. And then basically you've got a wiring diagram up here about where all your connections are gonna go to. So that's pretty, pretty straightforward really. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna screw this into the, um, the mounting holes and level it up and then we can wire the terminals in. So that is the mounting plate all screwed on nicely. Now, depending on your house, you might have to stick it onto the wall, but basically there was a back box there for the existing heating controls, so that was all fine and dandy. And let's connect these where they should be. So, N-O, normally open. And then, next we've got the common. 
which is our brown wire here. Obviously, it all depends on your existing heating setup. Don't just think because I've got a brown wire, you'll have one. It all depends on who wired your heating system up and what cable they used. Even though I know it's off, it just, just live wires just scare me, which is probably a good thing. So it means I'm not complacent. And then finally, we need to put our P1 in. Lovely. I hope the focus has stayed all right during this. I'm looking more at the electrics and the screen, which is probably a sensible thing to do. Okay. Okay, so we've got to cover this up again. Try not to yeet the screw on the floor. This is tight, there we go. Oh, is she in, is she in? Yes, she is. Okay, cool. Done that. Hook the front cover on, and we should hear a click. Let's see if we hook it on and we hear a click. I don't hear a click. I mean, maybe they were overselling the click. <laughs> right, now is the moment of truth. Turning on the mains power. Ah! I'm just messing. Everything's okay. Hopefully. <laughs> right, well, the boiler's fired up. I can hear that. Okay, we don't have a timer. So, in theory, it works. Let's turn the heating right up. Oh, yeah, I heard a relay click. Now, does that mean the radiators are getting warm? There we go, the boiler is calling for heat. The radiator symbol is lit. So we have just installed our very own wired thermostat. That was really easy. Right, I'm gonna make myself a nice cup of tea and have a sit down. Right, okay, I'm having a little sit down with a very snoozy doggy dog and <laughs> I thought I'd show you the uh, Tardo app because I'm having a little explore through it. Um, so it's got, it's got our thermostat showing there already and there's a few uh, different things we can do. We can turn off all rooms, we can resume our schedule, we can do a boost which turns all the heating on. Um, I think we need to try and edit our house because at the moment it says our thermostat is in room one, which isn't room one, it's the hallway. So let's have a little look to see if we can sort out our room. So let's go into rooms and devices. Aha. So we'll call that room hallway because here's, here's the hallway. So at the moment it's set to manual control. I haven't set up any um, sort of schedules or anything like that largely because I don't really know uh, what our schedule is going to be and I've got to install everything else so I'm going to worry about that a little bit later but now we go back home there you go it's showing the hallway temperature and at the moment it's just set to 15 degrees which is the lowest because I don't need the heating on um, now what is air comfort <laughs> look at that it, know, it knows about our inside air. That's interesting. That's really good. So it's obviously got some kind of air sensor in it. I like that. I do like to have like the vents in the windows open and stuff like that, because I don't like the house ever being stuffy. Um, what else? Okay, so you can choose to set it from home and away. This is something similar to the Nest, but I think if you want it to automatically do it based on your location, there's like a paid service that you can uh, join and it will, it will work, it will do it automatically based on whether your phone is saying you're home or away. Um, but we'll investigate that at another time. So yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's quite interesting. What's our weather ad adaptation? uses local weather information and adapts accordingly to save energy. I like that, especially as 
the energy prices are gonna be going up very soon. Um, open window detection. When Tano detects an open window, it notifies you to turn off the heat or the AC to save more energy, activate auto assist to let Tardo do this automatically. Okay, that's quite cool. I have heard that the detection can be a little bit overzealous. We will see how that goes going forwards. And then smart schedule. Uh, what room type of this? What room type is this? It's another. Oh, okay, so you, that's the sort of scheduling. So at the moment, it will keep the temperature between at 20 degrees between 7 and 10. And then between midnight and 7, it will keep the temperature to 18 degrees. That's fine. That sounds all right, actually. And then you can set what it does while you're away. And then you can say, make sure your home stays to at least this temperature. So if you're going away on holiday, you can sort of keep the house warm-ish if you want to, um, or you can just let it get really cold, completely up to you. Hmm, okay, well that's that's a little look around the app. I think what I'm gonna do next is install the thermostat upstairs in our bedroom, um, but because it's essentially exactly the same as the one downstairs, I won't show you that because it's just a waste of time. So um, yeah, come back in a minute and hopefully we'll have another working thermostat. Well, hello, you join me in the bathroom. Something I never thought I'd say on a vlog, but never mind. <laughs> now we're gonna uh, replace this thermostatic radiator valve with one of the Tardo smart thermostatic radiator valves. And uh, to do that, I'll show you how we set it up in the app. So uh, what I will do is I will show you my screen. There we go. So we're gonna go on to add device. I've got my new shiny thermostat. Okay, so we've got to let it use the camera. See, I'm literally sat cross-legged on the floor. There we go, so it's found the valve. So we've got to register the device. Okay, and we've got to open it. Hopefully you can see this. Perfect is open and we've got to take out this battery tab. Remove the battery strip, yep. Yeah. Got to press the pairing button for three seconds. One, two, three. There we go, so it's vibrating. And it's trying to connect to the internet bridge. Do, do, do. There we go, it is connected. Hopefully it should say connected in the app in just a second. Mm -hmm. There we go, your device is connected. Let's press continue. There we go, so we've got to view installation instructions. So there we go. So let's view those instructions. Okay, so it's making sure we've got a thermostatic valve. This is a thermostatic valve. And we've got to remove the existing head. So in theory, we should just be able to turn this. You might find that you need a big wrench to turn yours, but I do not. And there we go, that is the old one removed. Pretty simple. Yeah. So, uh, right, so we've got to screw the mounting bracket onto the valve. Now it comes with, let me just make sure you can see that. Can you see that? It says top there, and that is basically where the LED screen will be located. So you might want it to face out, you might want to, to face up to the top, or you know, where, wherever. So basically, make sure that is pointing where you want it, the screen to be displayed. Okay, right, I'm going to put it on the actual top of the radiator. And then you just screw it in position. Tighten it up. Now, um, it's worth mentioning if yours isn't the same size as this one, it does, the pack does come with different adapters to fit all kinds of different radiator valves. So I haven't needed to use that, but there, there's loads supplied in the pack. So you should hopefully be okay. Right, okay, so let's go back to those instructions. We've done that. 
Uh, right, yep, I've told you about where we put the LED position. Okay, so we've got to put this in place now. And it sort of locks into position. So this little pin here should be going to the pin at the top. And then you just sort of twist it. A bit fiddly. There we go, it's twisted in position now. So hopefully now it's doing its thing. There we go, it's making some vibrating noises. We've done that. There we go, so it's calibrating now. And um, I think that's nearly done. There we go, we've, we've calibrated. So uh, you can turn the temperature up or you can turn the temperature down. And there you go, that's, that's literally it all installed. So um, yeah, let's, uh, let's go back and have a little chat because there is an additional bit of setup which is really important, but I, they don't really tell you about it. So uh, let me show you that. Okay, well we're back downstairs in the kitchen. Everything has been installed and seems to be working really well. Now there's something that I need to configure that's really important. I mentioned at the start of the video that my house is split into two heating zones. So there's the downstairs thermostat that controls the downstairs zone, and there's the upstairs thermostat that control, controls the upstairs zone. You need to tell the Tardo app what heating zone your devices are in. So for example, the downstairs toilet thermostat that I fitted would be in the downstairs zone, but the one that I fitted in the bathroom is in the upstairs zone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you on here how you change which zone it's in, because otherwise it will just, everything will just be calling for heat and it won't work very well. So if we go into settings, and then we go into rooms and devices. Okay, so we want to change the bathroom. So we're saying that our bathroom, we need to put our bathroom into a zone. So we'll change the zone and that one is actually controlled by the master bedroom thermostat, though the one that's installed upstairs. In my setup, that's how it needs to work. It obviously depends on how your setup is. You might not have zones, you know, you might just have one sort of heating zone throughout the whole of your house. But because I've got a zoned heating system, I need to change that and that's really important to do. So let's click on save. And actually something that's interesting here that you can see on this screen as well, you can, it actually tells you what the thermostat or the radiator valves are measuring the temperature in the room. So they might perhaps be a bit out for whatever reason. So what you can actually do is compare what it's saying the temperature is with like an actual thermometer. And if there's any difference, you can adjust this temperature offset here just to make it absolutely spot on accurate. Now setting up this Tardo system has been incredibly easy. It's really, really simple and straightforward and I've had f no troubles at all. You know, I'm not just saying that for the sake of the camera, I genuinely have no troubles at all. And I think even if you're a bit daft, you could probably set this up without worrying. The only thing that might be a bit dicey is checking that your electrics are definitely off. Now obviously when you're changing radiator valves, you don't need to worry about turning your electrics off or indeed your water off because it's it's perfectly safe but yeah changing over the mains thermostats you've just got to be very careful and think about what you're doing and check and check and check again so yeah that is it i mean that's sort of a very brief overview of installing it and looking around the app and all that kind of stuff you know i might find that in a few months time after using it i could probably do a second video with a bit more of a deeper dive into the controls and sort of automations and things like that. But I think this video has gone on long enough and I think it's covered enough. So yeah, as I said at the beginning of the video, if you find these videos in any way helpful, then please do consider subscribing to the channel. At the very least, you can give it a little like. Um, but yeah, I've got nothing else to say. So for now, it's game over.